All right, folks, this is Scott, Game Audio Institute, doing this whole thing again uh, in Tunity and Unity together. And if we watched our last one, we just basically just kind of went through a code and tried to figure out what things were happening. And um, I mostly figured it out. There was a couple of little bit of question marky things, um, but um, we're going to actually try and make a copy of this script in a new script, do more or less some of the same things, but we're going to modify it so that we want to do our thing, essentially. So let's get over to Unity and make ourselves a new scene. And I'm not going to use the constellation generator because it's kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, I can do it, but uh, we're just basically going to just create an array. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, we can speed up the, the film if we need to do that. Uh, let's see if we can do that. So we're going to say game object cube. There we are. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate a bunch of cubes. Um, 16 of them, in fact. Uh, so right now what we want to do is take that script, this one here, and we're going to duplicate that. Um, which of course will break it because it really isn't supposed to be that way and we will see what happens with that and I'm going to put this in the script folder over here and uh, yeah it's going to give us some compilation errors so we have to figure out all of that issue for sure which is under scripts and we're just going to call this Tunity it's a long file name Tunity a uh, sequence test. Okay. All right. So now, now we can start modifying this basically. So the first thing that I definitely don't want to do is I don't want to change the position at all. I literally only want to, or rather position isn't going to be position. So it probably will be float. And I'm going to make this public because it's just useful to see. Well, actually, I could just show in the inspector. That's right. Okay. I got to get into good, better coding habits. Okay. So here we go. Uh, serialize field. Okay. So that'll make it show up in the inspector. And that'll be the float my position, which is basically the position of, of, of the mouse, which is happening, which we don't want to do. We don't want to have that be happening. Uh, so float my position. If we look all the way here, our position is my advancer secret get current value. Oh, okay, that's actually, maybe that is good. And then I think that might be good. And it might be actually, it might be that he, it's sending that value into there as an X position. Let's check that out actually. Probably gonna error out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a bunch of null refs, I'm sure. What did I not put in? All right, so it was a case of non-initialization. So uh, the script requires, and I was suddenly realizing that, in start it says my chuck equals get components su chuck sub instance. Notice how it didn't actually have a reference to a game object. It just said get component, which means that if it has no actual reference to a game object, it means that's the local game object that it's looking for. So it's looking for this script called chuck sub instance. I did put the chuck in here, which is the main instance of chuck. Um, but the issue was the fact that my sequence row, which I put my script on here, needed to have the chuck sub instance reference in order to be able to work. Once I did that, it worked fine. But it was, it is a little bit weird, but it is actually working. Now, take a look. It's kind of interesting. Take a look at the position of our sequence row object, and we will see what is going on. It's kind of cool. It's actually repositioned sequence row's actual position, which we don't really care about per se. We're not really transforming it. That's what that transform position was all about, which I was too confused about. But let's go check it out. See, take a look. If we look over here, if you see that up there, it's changing. One, two, three, four, two, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. Yay. So that is actually 
giving us a position, which is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for a time advance from Chuck, essentially. So that's great. But what it was doing was actually setting the X position of our, uh, of our sequence row object to zero, which means it was moving the entire thing over uh, in the camera view, which is why it looks weird when you play it. Okay, it's, again, this is just dem demonstrationing the basic principle. Okay, so now that we have this, we can start working. You know, it's like, you know, it's mad scientist time. Uh, we can do some fun stuff. So let's go check this out. So what we want to do is, first of all, we definitely want to disable any movement of the mouse to control anything. So I don't care about ch changing the tempo anymore. So I'm just going to say a uh, new timestamp is equal to uh, 500 divided by 1,000 F. Um, let's see what that does. And... That's a bit odd. <laughs> it only did it uh, two steps and then it did it. Okay, well, we'll figure that out. I'm sure that's not a big deal. Um, there's probably some kind of thing where we went a thousand duration delta time or something like that. It, it's a little bit weird, but I'm um, quite sure why it did that. But anyway, uh, it is correctly working now as far as like the pr proceeding. Now, here's it saying four, okay? I don't want it to do four. Remember how it was going zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three? Yeah, let's go 16. Let's see what happens to that. So the idea is that then it would move 16 parts or 16 ahead or whatever. Um, and we might, again, I'm not really interested in moving the actual position of things, but it's, it's interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's the idea. Or we might be doing that actually, but not not for not for the entire row right but there we go five six seven nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen bop two three four okay so that's it that's good so now that's that's really cool uh what we need to do now is we need to just not be doing it to this sequence row and moving all the cubes. Probably what we need to do is move this over to another object or create another parent object for these things and put that away from the sequence row. So I'm instead going to say create empty parent, call this sequence row. Now I also got to make sure that there's no script and stuff on it. Yeah, the sequence row is over here. This is going to be, I don't mind making this actually, uh, oh yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's go create the object cube. I also want to make some materials actually. It's probably not a bad idea just to kind of get things kind of organized. Um, we might as, well, might as well start getting into it. We don't really have very many materials right now, but we will, we will have more, I'm sure. So there's a material. I'm going to call this, let me see, sequencer position uh, underscore material. Uh, right, and then I'm gonna duplicate that one again. Do this next one. The next one will be called, it'll also be called map, but it won't be called sequence position. So this will be called playback position. Play position material, okay. And I'm going to make that larger since that's going to be our bigger object. So this is going to be our playhead. Playhead. And our playhead needs to be set. Oh, I don't know. We'll figure it out here. And we'll see what happens. I mean, technically it shouldn't be moving along. I should be, it should be sort of in a control script area kind of thing. But yeah, whatever. We're just trying to figure out things. This is what I wanted to set to zero. Right. And then we can make the main camera be further over so that we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, but our sequencer control also set here. That's going to be our playhead, which is a cube. And we're going to change the material for the cube to play position material. Right. 
uh, which we do need to change the color of. And we're going to do that. Change the color of that. Okay, cool. And we're also going to change the scale of that object in the scene. It's possible that's what's happening is we are. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Okay, so that's fine. So now I'm going to say it's uh, not rotate. We're not going to do rotate my cube at all uh, or whatever. We'll just leave that disabled for now. So this is going to be my cube. Oh, sorry, no. Playhead. <laughs> Playhead. I think that's the only reference there was. Okay. So let's just see how that works. I don't know. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to not have a, we want it to go by individual position. So yeah, you know, I think I can do math F round, but it really wants to do like the 0.5, it will round to the highest value. And if it's less than 0.5, it will round to the lowest value. I think it's probably an easier idea to just say int grid, int grid position. So int grid position, equals uh int i think it's correct right no is that correct my position yeah i can do that right so int grid position equals int my position then we would do i know this is a little bit weird but that's the idea we're going to go int grid position equals int my position and then my position divided by two Let's just see how that goes. I would say that this would probably be grid position. Oh, it would be float. It's a little bit weird, but you have to do it, I think, like this, right? Float grid position? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so basically, I'm converting it back to float because it needs to be a float in order to work and work in a vector. That's the problem. That's the reason why I was doing this. So it's kind of converting it to int to round it to the int that's related to it and then converting it back to float because it has to be used as a float within a vector three. Um, eh, you know, whatever. Oh, doesn't like that. It does not like that. Int grid position equals int my position. At what point does it sound now? 22. Well, it doesn't like that. Or is it, is it, is it the same as the float? So you go int my position. What I want to do is make sure it's just rounded to the absolute nearest integer without rounding to the 0.5 and then going up because I figure that's going to change some weird issues. So what happens in this case is I said the grid position equals int my position. I'm converting it to an integer. So that means it'll be 1.1, you know, like 0 point something or another. It'll still be just zero. Basically, it'll convert it to zero. And then I'm taking that and I'm making a new position, which is that, which is a float version of exactly this value. We're not converting it back to uh, we're not you know, listening for the individual incrementing uh, positions. And then I set the transform position for the playhead to the quantized position that basically I, I, I just defined. So it's really a little bit weird. I convert the float to an int, back to a float, and then put it in the vector. Uh, but I had to do it this way. I could not actually put it inside the formulas uh, directly like this way. I had to define it first and then put it in the formula. Um, that was where it was actually erroring out here. on was on line 82. Anyway, let's try this out. At least it's compiling. So we'll see what happens. And there we go. Yeah, except the fact that it's not <laughs> not traveling back to the beginning. <laughs> so that's so we'll have to deal with that. But hey, that's uh, that's in progress. We'll see you in the next one. Hope this helps you get your game audio on. Bye.